Oh, good old Africa. <laughs> well, one of my favorite places to visit on the planet. Psych. Um, look, I'm not a fan of the African continent, if I may say. Uh, I just actually said, so I'm not going to may say. Um, I do like the med. Libya, Tunisia, Morocco. I'm into the med. But this is taking place in uh, Central African Republic, known as Car, which isn't the best place on the planet. And I've spent a lot of time in Central Africa, and I will tell you from experience, the worst places on the planet Earth are in Africa. Um, that's not being biased. That's not being the bad, ugly, loud American. That's reality. Like, Africa sucks. Like, there's no cash crops. There's extreme poverty, which means there's extreme terrorism. And these guys, these Portuguese paratroopers, happen to be in the middle of heavy combat and a gunfight. In this particular case, you just saw one of their guys sidestepping after they just ran an obstacle, um, likely an anti-tank uh, um, uh, weapon on shoulder fired that they shot at somebody. It could be an AT-4. It could be um, a, a Gustav. I can't really tell from the, the angle. But, yeah, they're getting it on, and good for them. Ooh, danger close. But they look like they have ballistic vehicles, so that's not going to hurt unless that just cracked the windshield, <laughs> which it looks like it might have done. Um, usually rocket propelled grenades, you need some back blast area clear. This is kind of disjointed. I think it's the same kind of gunfight where they're going into the village where they're attacked from. But look at this terrain, guys. I mean, this is insane. I mean, you have what looks like kind of triple canopy segments of trees and foliage surrounded by mud buildings that you would see in Afghanistan. This could be northern Afghanistan with the trees. Um, usually you'll see the timber high up in elevation in the mountains, but this is a whole bunch of things going on, and these boys are trying to get it done. Obviously representing the United Nations. Ooh, let's look at these guys' kit. There we go. Maybe, maybe I'll be able to identify. Well, bam. All right, so they're running, looks like op score helmets. They got infrared flashing lights on top of their heads. They have call signs, obviously, on their on their uh, right shoulders. And they're running some body armor. I don't know what kind of kit that is. I ran Cry, Paraclete, e Eagle, um, most of my military career. Uh, anyways, a lot, what I was going to say is a lot of these uh, countries, look, a lot of what we call 5 Eye countries, these countries that are closely affiliated and supported by the United States in cross training and equipment, funding, all kinds of stuff. Um, they get the best equipment. Some of the outlying organizations, including the Portuguese, likely don't get the best equipment. It's funny when you see like the Russians or the name the, the country running their equipment and gear, and they think it's like Gucci, sexy, and it's nothing close to cry. It's, it's nothing uh, close to tier tactical. It's like hodgepodge equipment. They don't look, I mean, the colors look good. I don't know about their equipment specifically, but they look kind of squared away. I'm trying to identify the guns that they're using. Oh, there we go. Oh, I can't tell. It looks, they look like FN guns, but I can't tell. Uh, and I'm not going to research it or look it up. I'm just going off of perspective and experience here. They look like G3s. They could be G3, like modified G3s, HK G3s. They got Humvees. They're rolling in. It looks like they're conducting a raid. And it's hard to tell because it's hard to piece stuff together. Um, but they're getting it on. I mean, they're certainly in harm's way. They're getting shot at and they're shooting back. I hope that building he went into was a building with other guys. Oh, 
Oh, so they're talking to close air support in English, so they're being supported by an English-speaking um, cast platform. But I don't know what that means. We'll see if they drop bombs. Ooh, that's interesting. Let's look at... Oh, <laughs> look at this! Look at this! Um, so he's about to huck a flashbang or grenade. Uh, yeah, who knows? I don't know. I'm used to the M67s that, that look like uh, baseballs. These guys are throwing what looks to be like a cylindrical... A device that more likely is a flashbang, but you have a guy on a knee with a shield. A lot of guys like insult the shield. I'm a I'm a fan of the shield. Why? Like I want ballistic protection, not on my body. Like I don't want the shield to be my chest. I want it to be this thing in front of me that I could hide behind. What's interesting is their shield guy is using a. Let me look this up real quick. I don't want to fuck this up. MP5K. Right. It was right. I was right. I was right. Jo hey, Julian, I was right. It was an MP5K. 18 Bravo, weapon specialist. No big deal. MP5K is what the guy holding the shield is doing. And they have an SOP here. Look, a lot of special operations units use standard operating procedures, and they're very good at that, proficient at that. These dudes look squared away. I mean, they're wearing ballistic helmets. They got go. Everybody's got a damn GoPro on. Um, but they're using an mp 5 uh, K for the guy who's holding the shield because he needs a smaller form factored pistol gun, uh, which at the time, let's see, these, <laughs> the Google search says, is an MP5 a real gun? <laughs> that, was the, that was the search. I think it's real. Um, I think the MP5 was chambered, obviously it was chambered in 9mm. I'm trying to see if there's any other chambers. Like these guys might be using 10mm, 40 cal, I don't know. Let's just assume it's 9mm, but here we go. Flashbang, definitely, not a grenade. And he's going in the house, and they're doing two-man clears. Maybe three-man. That was a minigun. Ooh. That's after, that's post, destroy everything. Guys, I've been on target sets like this. Um, a lot of issues that you run into international operations where you have like the helicopter that the guy who's the joint terminal air controller on the ground. I know this, I was a, I was a joint terminal air controller, qualified at least as a sniper in special operations. When you're calling for close air support and you're speaking the language, what's often missed is the way in which you relay information. Uh, like he said something like, I heard like nine o'clock or something like that. Like, what does that mean? Is that, is that nine o'clock off my position? Is that nine o'clock off the enemy's position? The way that you communicate with close air support or um, support by fire entities, this could be field artillery, mortar rounds, uh, helicopters, airplanes, has to be very specific. That's what scares the crap out of me because you're looking at people dropping bombs danger close to guys on the ground. This is a super disjointed video. Um, there's a whole bunch of things going on. Here's here's my sum up. Um, Portuguese paratroopers get ambushed. They roll into the village where the bad guys are. They shoot a lot of bad guys. They blow a lot of stuff up. I, I don't know the, the actual results of this, but war is chaos. War is hell. War is like very confusing in clouds of smoke and concussion and shooting guns. And these guys are just kind of getting through it. What you don't see is kind of like the, the choreographed, um, orchestrated experience of guys doing work. I mean, these dudes are breaching um, a metal door. That always makes me nervous right there. Um, they're obviously doing CQB, but one bad guy with a machine gun could open up on those guys. A guy comes through my front door and you're a terrorist. They're getting gunned down. Looks like some 107s. Maybe, oh no, those are like rockets. Um, nothing like a bright white UN vehicle to conceal yourself from the enemy's perspective. I love that. I feel like like the UN should have like the white vehicle that they roll in 
and and that's like because it's peacetime, right? Until it's not, and then they should have like the the Hot Wheels version where you spray it with water and then it, it goes camo. It's like why are you rolling into a place with camouflage uniforms, doing um, special operations things in a big white vehicle? I mean, if that's only your only option. That's only your only, your only option. How rapidly peacetime United Nations activities turn into war. You probably heard about Somalia, Black Hawk Down. That's how that whole thing kicked off. All right, guys, I'm going to end it here. Combat Reacts. <laughs> that was very confusing for me. Uh, it may be confusing for you. Um, I, I might not even show this video, but I, I might just send it because maybe you're interested in that. Uh, a couple perspectives. Foreign militaries are, are hard to navigate because they suck at media. They're not really good at putting uh, media together. But as you can see, war as hell, war as chaos. But here you go. That's for you. Uh, subscribe, like, hit the notification button. All the links to all the stuff I want you to support is down below. Why? Because we don't monetize on these videos because we can't. We just highlight this stuff. You talk about guns, you're immediately taken off the monetization list, the good guy list. Um, but it's okay because if you support us uh, in the links below, you support Philcraft Survival, you support all the things we're doing, we'll keep supporting you with valuable content. Until next time, peace out.